Well, my passion for cars began when I was 14, and my sister was looking after me, but she was 16. Her boyfriend was in the Ford Truck Club, and we would go on events, and so I started liking cars then. My parents used to travel around with a camper on top of a 66 Chevy pickup truck, and so when I turned 16, I got the Chevy pickup truck. Within about a month or so, I traded it straight across for a 64 and a half Mustang, to which I became the secretary of the Mustang Club and started really liking cars on my own right. I'm about 18 years old and I get my first job at a customs broker, which is what I do today, but the commodities that it did was cars and stone and tile. So it kind of played into what I already liked. Working through the industry, I got to love cars and I got to spend a lot of time importing, exporting, and learning everything that I knew. And then I ended up being the fastest in the club for a while because I spent all my money when I was working, installing the torque converter and all that stuff, started putting in my electronic distributor. I started working on cars actually a little bit until I didn't know how to use a drill. One day I'm racing the car and pushed it a little too far, taking it for brake and it goes clunk, clunk. So that was the end of that. So I ended up having to buy a 72 Pinto with a stick shift. But then I learned how to drive a stick shift, and so that's how I, you know, started really having fun with cars. My name is Robin Grove. I'm the CEO of Cars USA International Shipping, and I drive a 1962 AC Bristol. I'm working for this customs broker, and I was one of the first women runners or document deliverers in the port of LA. Customs would always call my boss and say, look, why are you sending a woman to do, to open crates and to do all this? And, and it's like, see, she can open it. And so I'd go in and I'd open crates and, you know, hammer them shut or whatever it took. So that's kind of all how it started. I was with the first company for 25 years, helped build it, got all my licenses. I'm a workaholic and I, whatever I can learn every single day is, you know, kind of forward motion. So after 25 years, I was ready to own it. But that didn't work out, nepotism took over. I ended up uh, getting an employment by a company called Masterpiece International, which was 13 offices nationwide as Senior Vice President of Commercial Operations. I just kept on learning. I went on the boards. After about eight and a half years with that company, they kind of ended my contract. So I said, okay, what am I going to do? And I ended up opening my own company, specializing only in the cars and the stone and tiles a little bit. And then within a couple of years after that, I married with Cars UK and they needed to open a USA presence. And there I was in my own company, specializing in cars. You know, that was just what I'm known for. Want to know anything about import, export, about cars? Come over this way. Right. And we opened Cars USA, LA, and then we opened up New York, subsequently opened Dubai, Japan, now Amsterdam. And so it's just the global presence of cars companies is just going crazy. Shortly after I opened my first company, Loa, Alfredo Garcia uh, brought me this car. And he says, Robin, I've been telling you forever, you have to own a car. What do I need a car for? I'm so busy worrying about them, you know? He goes, I have it for you. I go, okay, great. I go, what is it? It's an AC Bristol. What color is it? He goes, green. I said, okay, great, green. It matches my eyes. Uh, okay, I'll buy it. I had no idea what it was at the time. And then I started really falling into the love of the car once I started driving it. It was first the history of the car and then all the people I got to meet through it. And then I got to drive it and the more I drive it, the more comfortable I get with it. You know, you can tell a lot of personality by the type of cars people drive. We ended up finding the original race car driver who imported the car back in 63. And in this folder has the rough draft AC cars, where he found it, what he wanted, and every single document pertaining to the car. And then what ended up happening even with it, the wife gives me this little Polaroid, and it's Gil, the owner of the original importer, sitting next to Alan Grant, right, in the 96 yellow, you know, um, the Cobra that he had. And so I showed it to Alan. Just doors just keep on opening up with, with different things on that. It's just amazing. It has a, uh, D2100 engine, a Bristol engine. It's a straight six, and it has three Rudd Speed actual carburetors on the top. It had drums in the back, discs in the front. Bristol engine's really quite sturdy, and is really known to be one of the sturdiest ones, so. 
but I keep on having to push the uh, envelope a little bit with it each time. It has two like fuel fillers. You can see SCCA Racing, it only has 6,500 miles on it, original miles, even to this day. And a couple of little you know, stickers from the different track days. That's exactly how it looked in the book in 1966, which was one of the last races that it did. And then so it just kept on opening up doors and meeting just so many people in the Shelby world. Now it's like I'm, I'm adopted. I was so worried about protecting the cars and learning the governmental rules, you know, and so that wasn't my focus. My focus was running and building those companies. And then when this came along and started to go to the different concours or actually being a member of the club up at um, Cotton to the Quail, La Jolla, it won awards. I was driving it because I had to get the shifting because the shifting system, then you gotta, gotta go like that, right? And it's older. And because it's older, I didn't want to hurt it. So that was kind of a challenging. And then I took it to Mike McCleskey, who just rebuilt them and just now it just hums. And I'm saying, okay, I have confidence. We're bonding. It's only been 900 miles, so I really have to start driving it more and more. The California Miele will put 1,000 miles on it, so that'll be the first real test of longevity. When this thing opens up, because you put a little extra race cam in it or whatever, what happens is it kind of goes, it kind of opens up like that because of the uh, Bristol engine. So it's really fun to listen to because it opens up so late. There's not many streets you can drive it on to really allow it to open like that. So, but that's a lot of fun. It's like a roller coaster, like that. So you have to bond with cars, you have to trust them because you always watch the temperature. So there's the top temperature for the water and then there's the bottom temperature for the oil, which I keep on hitting the gauge. The oil heat never seems to go up very much, which is good. But I do get a lot of attention. Or they go by, is that your husband's car? No, it's not, but thanks for playing. It's the cars, it's passion. It's about the passion in the people. You know, and it translates to the cars because when you get in a car, you become it. Each car kind of finds me. I don't think that I've ever really gone out and looked for cars. They find me, and so those are the ones I adopt.